This one's then will be assassinated. Their names are marked. You know your brother has to die too. Do you agree? I agree. Put a mark on his name too, Anthony. Only on the condition that your sister's son, Publius, also must die, Mark Anthony. He will die. See, I've sealed his fate with this mark next to his name. But Lepidus, go to Caesar's house. Bring his will here, and we'll figure, find out a way to reduce his bequest to the people. Will you be here when I return? Either here or at the capital. He's an unremarkable man, fit only to be sent on errands. Does it really make sense, once we divide the world into three parts, that he should be one of the three rulers? You thought it made sense, and you listened to him about who should be marked with these harsh death sentences. Octavius, I'm older than you are, and although we're giving these honors to this man so that he shares some of the blame for what we're doing, he'll carry these honors like a jackass carries gold groaning and sweating under the load, either led or pushed as we direct him. Once he's carried our treasure where we want it, we'll free him of the load and turn him loose like a jackass to shake his ears and graze in the public pastures. You can do what you want, but he's an experienced and honorable soldier. So is my horse, Octavius, and for that reason, I give him all the hay he wants. But my horse is a creature that I teach to fight, to turn, to stop, to run in a straight line. I govern the motion of his body, and in some ways, Lepidus is just like that. He has to be taught and trained and told to go forward. He's an empty man who pays attention to tastes and fashions that other men look up and got tired of long ago. Don't think about Lepidus, except as a means to an end. And now, Octavius, listen to more important things. Brutus and Cassius are raising armies. We have to raise our own immediately, so we should combine forces and organize our allies, pull together our friends, and stretch our resources as far as they'll go. Let's immediately organize a council to discuss the best way to find out their secrets and the safest way to confront the threats we're already faced with. Let's do that, because we're hemmed in by many enemies. And even some of those people who smell at us are in fact with them, against us, plotting. Stop! Pass on the command to halt. What's happening now, Lucius? Is Cassius nearby? He is nearby. And Pizarro has come to salute you on behalf of his master. I have no doubt that my master will prove himself to be what he is, honorable or noble. I don't doubt him. Can I have a word with you, Mr. Lee? Tell me how Cassidy has treated you, put my mind to rest. He received me with courtesy and sufficient respect, but not with affection, nor with as much open and friendly conversation as he once created me. You describe the warm friend who's cooling off. Remember this, Mr. Lee. When a friend starts to get sick of you, he cheats you artificially. Plain and simple loyalty doesn't make anyone act fun. But in sincere men like horses, who are too likely to start a race and make a big show of the spirit. But when push comes to shove, they do like those horses that are all show and slow to crawl. And is it an army approaching? They plan to spend the night in the Sardis, in large part, the main body of the cavalry. I'm coming to the Look, he's arrived. Meet him at his dignified table. Oh! Oh, pass along the order. Oh! 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 Most noble brother, you have done me wrong. Let the gods judge me. Do I even mistreat even my enemies? No. So how can I possibly wrong a brother? Cassius, calm down. We know each other well, and you can speak of our grievances quietly. Let's not argue here in front of both our armies, which ought to see nothing but love between us. Order them to move back. Then in my tent, you can elaborate your complaints and all this. Pindarus, order our commanders to lead their charges a little ways away from this ground. Lucilius, you do the same, and don't allow anyone to come into our tent until we finish our conference. Have Lucius and Titinius guard the door. Now, Antony, our prayers have been answered. 
You said the enemy wouldn't come down, but keep to the hills and upper regions. It seems nice. Their forces are nearby. They intend to challenge us here at Philippi, responding to our challenge before we even challenged him. I know how they think and understand why they're doing this. They really wish they were somewhere else, but they want to descend on us, looking fierce so we'll think they're brave, but they aren't. Prepare yourself, generals. The enemy approaches with great display. They show their bloody heralds of battle, and something must be done immediately. Octavius, lead your forces slowly out to the left side of the level field. You go to the left side. I'll stay on the right. Why are you defying me in this urgent matter? I'm not defying you, but I'm just going to do what I'm do. Here, Tiffany, we have to go out and talk to them. Mark Anthony, should we give the signal to them? No, Octavius Caesar. We'll respond to their charge. Go forward. The generals want to speak with us. Don't move until I give the signal to attack. Wait before fighting. Is that how it is, countrymen? Not that we love words more than fighting, unlike you. Good words are better than bad strokes, Octavius. Brutus, you give a nice speech along with your evil strokes. Think of how you made a hole in Caesar's heart as you cried, Long live Caesar! Hail Caesar! Anthony, we don't yet know what kind of blows you can inflict, but your words are as sweet as honey. You've stolen from the bees and left them with nothing. I took their stings too, wouldn't you say? Oh yes, and you, you've left them silent too. You stole their buzzing, Anthony. You very wisely warn us before you stand. Villains, you didn't do even that when your vile daggers struck each other as they hacked up Caesar's sides. You smiled like apes and fawned like dogs and bowed like servants, kissing Caesar's feet. And all the while, damned Pasca, like a dog, struck Caesar on the neck from behind. Oh, you flatterers. Flatterers? No, Brutus. You have only yourself to think. Anthony wouldn't be here to offend us today if you'd listened to me earlier. Come, oh, come. Oh. Let's remember why we're here. If arguing makes us sweat, the real trial will make this water turn into blood. Look, I draw my sword. I draw my sword against conspirators. When do you think I'll put it away? I will never put away my sword until Caesar's 33 wounds are well avenged or until I too die by your blade. Caesar, you're not going to be killed by a traitor unless you kill yourself. I hope you're right. I wasn't born to die by your sword. If you're the noblest of the family, young man, you would die more honorable. An annoying schoolboy unworthy of such an honor, joined by a masquerader and a partier. Still the same old Cassius. Come, Anthony, let's go. Traitors, we defy you. If you dare to fight today, come to the field. And if if not, come until you have the courage. Now, let the wind blow, waves swell, and ships sing. The storm has begun, and everything is at stake. Vasily, I'd like a word with you. My lord. Miss Ola! What is it, my general? Miss Ola, today is my birthday. I was born in this very day. Give me your hand, Miss Ola. You will be my witness that I have been forced, as Pompey was, to wagger all of our freedom on one battle. You know that I used to believe in Epicurus and his disregard for omens. I have changed my mind now, and partly believe in omens. Traveling from Sardis, two mighty eagles fell on our front flag and pierced here. Eating from the land of the soldiers could accomplish us in Philippi. This morning, they've flown away, and in their place are ravens, crows, and kites, flying over our heads and looking down on us. As though they were sickly prey, their shadows are like a deadly canopy, under which our army lies ready to die. Don't believe this, my lord. I only partly believe it. 
for I am enthusiastic and resolved to meet the dangers without wavering. Right, Vasilius. Now, most noble Brutus, the gods are friendly with us today, so that we, who want peace, can't live on to old age. But since the affairs of men are always uncertain, let's think about the worst that may happen. If we lose this battle, this is the last time we'll speak to each other. If we lose, what do you plan to do? By the same principle that made me condemn Cato for committing suicide, I plan to be patient and submit to what the gods decide. I don't know why, but I find it cowardly and vile to kill oneself early to prevent possible suffering later on. Then, if we lose this battle, you'll be willing to be led in chains through the streets of Rome? No, Cassius, no. Don't imagine that I'll ever allow myself to return to Rome in chains. My mind is too great for that. But today, the work that March 15 began must end, and I don't know if we'll ever meet again. Therefore, accept my everlasting farewell. Forever and forever, farewell, Cassius. If we meet again, then we'll smile. If not, this parting was well done. Forever and forever, farewell, Brutus. If we meet again, then we'll smile indeed. If not, it's true. This parting was well done. Well, lead on. Oh, I wish I could know what will happen today before it happens. But it's enough to know that the day will end, and the end will be known. Come, let's go. Ready? Ready? Guys, count me down. Count me down. All right. All right. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you only got one. <laughs> you missed one, sucker. Hey, you have to get it. Let's go. You missed it. Come on. <laughs> what? Go for it. Oh! Now press it. There you go. Now it's right. Okay, okay stop. That's how you do it. Yeah. How do I stop it? You press it again. Okay, I stopped it. Now what? Okay. Now what? No, no it's okay.